In 2009, tragedy struck the world of rock climbing, and a legend was lost. John Baca, a name with daring ascents and unparalleled free soloing, met an untimely and fateful end in an accident that sent shockwaves through the climbing community. What went wrong? John Baca, a legendary figure in the obscure and close-knit world of rock climbing, died Sunday after a fall near his home in Mammoth Lakes, California. He was 52. The free-spirited Californian symbolized American free climbing and free soloing with a solo traditional climbing ethic. Bold, blonde-haired, surfer-esque, and ever charismatic, Baca will be remembered for many of his earlier achievements, including his daring 1980s free solos of Yosemite routes like Outer Limits. Baca was regarded as a rock climbing legend for his daring, unexpected climbs when the sport was not yet widely accepted. He invented physical and psychological training for the sport, ushering in a new era of sportsmen who were concerned with safety and the environment. Baca, a native of Los Angeles, frequently climbed in the Joshua Tree National Park where he first met John Lang. His free solo ascents of Yosemite routes like New Dimensions 5.11a and his 1981 first ascent of Baca Yerian 5.11c with Dave Yerian are what made him famous. He made the infamous $10,000 offer in the same year to anyone who could follow his ropeless adventures in Yosemite for an entire day. Nobody picked up the reward. The form of climbing he practiced was considered the most dangerous because it did not involve ropes or safety equipment. The precarious chapter of Baca's life began in the early 1970s when, as part of a hotshot group of stone masters frequenting Joshua Tree National Monument in the Southern California desert, he was introduced to John Long, himself destined for superstardom. He persuaded Baca to free solo a 95-foot route called Double Cross which had a degree of difficulty of 5.7 plus. Baca, in his prime, stopped scaling anything less than 5.10. Baca was not only a gifted climber, but also a forward thinker. He contributed to the development of climbing equipment and training techniques. His influence extended to the design of climbing shoes, harnesses, and other gear, helping to improve the safety and efficiency of climbers. Baca scampered spider-like up Double Cross and soon became part of a seasonal pilgrimage to Yosemite Valley and Camp 4, the historic center of the climbing universe. There, the climbers enjoyed a spartan existence but relished every moment of togetherness and the beacon call of sheer surroundings. They challenged themselves and shared stories around the campfire. Baca was often the subject of those stories. In 1976, news resonated throughout the climbing universe after he free soloed a 5.11a route in Yosemite called New Dimensions. People looked at me like I was very weird for a couple of months, Baca recalled in April for an article in Colorado's Daily Camera newspaper. They thought I was crazy or something. After years of climbing without protection and sustaining his only major injuries in a car wreck, Baca was confirmed dead by the sheriff of Mono County, California where he lived in Mammoth Lakes. He was an artist, said Dean Feidelman, a contemporary who has climbed with him for decades. He transcended the sport. Baca left his mark across the Yosemite Valley, the worldwide focal point of elite climbing in the 1970s, by making terrifying ascents of spectacular rock formations like El Capitan. To critics, Baca cut a stubborn self-righteous figure, uncompromising on daring style and minimal gear. To admirers, he represented the vanishing purity of a simpler age, when rocks and mountains were to be ascended only from the ground up without advance rigging. For about half a decade in his prime, Bucker enjoyed a reputation comparable to that of Royal Robbins in the 1950s. Since Bucker, I don't think there was anybody you could say was the greatest, most influential climber in the world in his time, said Pete Mortimer, a well-known climber based in Boulder, Colorado. Baca joined the Stone Masters, a gang of brazen young climbers in Yosemite Valley in the early 1970s, with a pair of boots and an alto saxophone. Big wall climbing techniques from the 1960s were giving way to free climbing, whose practitioners aspired to use the least amount of equipment possible and simply ropes for safety. That level of self-reliance was taken to dangerous extremes by Baca. If ever a Stone Master carried the name on his sleeve, and he scribbled it on his boots as well, it was John Bucker, Grand Templar of the entire movement, 
wrote John Long, a founder of the group, in an online history. Barker once spent an entire season climbing without using a rope. He offered $10,000 to anyone who could keep up with him for a day. He found no takers. His exploits soon gained him notice in the American Alpine Journal, where one diarist wrote that, his extraordinary free climbing talent, coupled with an awesome physique, polished by the mental discipline of years of experience, place him at a level few attain. Bucker fell from grace among some climbers as the sport splintered into even narrower specializations in the 1980s. Some adapted his unharnessed physical techniques to the safe confines of boulder climbing. In contrast, others sought to scale more difficult pitches with bolts and other gear that could sometimes permanently mark the rock formations. John never really pushed his ethics on anyone, but because he was so good and made no bones about it, he was often attacked, simply because he represented something so different than the changing mainstream, said John Middendorf, a climber based in Australia. He was really quite zen in this regard. Bucker's notion of purity found renewed interest in the 1990s, as a new generation of climbers took issue with bolting and other practices they perceived as unnatural, irresponsible, or even cheating. He found work designing climbing shoes, establishing himself as a mentor. The accident occurred on July 5, 2009, when Bucker was climbing the Dyke Wall in Mammoth Lakes. At the age of 52, he was still pushing the boundaries of what was considered possible in the sport. Unfortunately, on this day something went terribly wrong. Bucker returned to climbing while still recovering from his own injuries in a neck brace. He fell from a formation near his house called Dyke Wall around noon on Sunday. His son, Tyrus, is his only heir. In the Yosemite Valley, he also leaves climbing routes that bear his name. While attempting a solo climb on a difficult route, Bucker fell. His exact cause of fall remains somewhat disputed, but it is believed that a piece of protection equipment, a removable cam, pulled out from the rock, causing him to lose his grip and plummet to the ground below. The fall was significant, and despite his remarkable climbing skills, it proved fatal. The climbing community mourned the loss of a true pioneer and visionary in the sport. John Bucker's contributions to free solo climbing were immense, and his accident was a stark reminder of the inherent risks associated with such extreme pursuits. It sparked discussions about safety in climbing, the balance between pushing limits and preserving life, and the enduring legacy of those who dare to challenge the vertical world. John Backer's accident serves as a sad chapter in rock climbing history, reminding climbers of the importance of safety and the fine line between pushing the boundaries of human achievement and facing the unforgiving realities of nature. John Backer's legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of climbers who continue to be inspired by his bold spirit while his tragic accident in 2009 was a significant loss to the climbing world, his influence endures through the countless ascents and adventures that continue to be inspired by his pioneering spirit. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to always be updated with the most exciting content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.